supply chainers, wherever you are in the world, this is Sarah Barnes Humphrey with you today. Are you ready? Let's talk supply chain. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thoughts and Coffee. My name is Sarah Barnes Humphrey. I'm the founder and host of Let's Talk Supply Chain, the Blended Podcast, and the founder of the Blended Pledge. And I'm super excited to be here with you today. We're going to be talking about Super Bowl and avocados and supply chain and electric vehicles. And my trade bestie, Audrey Ross, is going to be with us today as well. But before we get started, I need to give you a bit of an update on what's been happening at Let's Talk Supply Chain. So we have a brand new episode with Era Technology. That's right. Fred came on the show and he talked about decision intelligence. Now, this is the first time that I've ever heard this term before. But let me tell you, the conversation about this term, decision intelligence, was a really, really, really good one. They are changing so many things with this one term in supply chain. And so I implore you to go and listen to the episode 317, wherever you subscribe to the show. We also have it over on YouTube right now. And um, we have it on the website, let's talk supply chain.com. Now, I don't know if most of you know this, but the let's talk supply chain podcast is really focused on companies in supply chain coming on and talking about who they are, what they do, real life examples of how they help their customers so that you as supply chain professionals can actually vet a vendor and see if you're the right fit for them before you even get into their sales funnel. That's what the podcast is all about. So definitely go and check out out the episodes. You can even go to letstalksupplychain.com, use the search function, put in your keyword, and all of that content will come up and you'll find what vendors are actually within that keyword for you so you can go and check them out. Anyways, just thought I would share that with you. Next, we have got our live event. So coming up at 10 a.m. Eastern on Friday, Eric Johnson is back with LogTech Live, and he's going to be talking about working with early stage providers. Now, this is a big deal, right? Because we've got lots of technology providers coming out in supply chain. Some are new. Some have been here a while. Um, but if you want to work with somebody who's new in the industry, um, this is your chance to find out how you can best do that. Now, the other thing I wanted to share with you again, I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is the game show. So we came out with a game show called Superstar Game Face um, back in December, just the end of December. And we got everybody together to play some supply chain games. So we had Madison and Adebayo. We had a team from Freight Waves, Hope White and Ramel Watley as well and then Audrey joined me and we had a lot of fun if you have not seen this episode we're actually putting the comments in or the link to the show in the comments because the feedback that we've gotten on this is that it's like the best 48 minutes in supply chain that people have had in a while bring smile to people's faces laughter and that's what we want to do in the industry so go and check that out we put that uh, link in the comments for you and then last but not least, we have Blended Pledge. Now, we know that we're back into um, conference season. And so we want to let you know that the applications are open. So if you've been asked to speak at an industry conference, we want you to go and apply and we can help you with those travel expenses. We don't want you to say no because you can't. You can't pay for the travel expenses or you're wondering how you're going to pay for those. That's what the blended pledge is for. So if you know anybody, if you are that person, go to the blended pledge on LinkedIn, click the visit website button. I probably need to change that button, but that button goes straight to our application page. So definitely go and check that out. We want to help as many people as we possibly can this year. And uh, so, yeah. Go and check that out. Well, now, without further ado, it's time to bring up Audrey Ross. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? It's so nice, it's um, icy, rainy, gray day here in Toronto. <laughs> I know. You should see all the lights I have on right now because right? it's so dark in here. And I was like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to yeah. light this up for today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my, my attempt is it's a little poor here, but... <laughs> no, no, no. It looks good. It looks good. So for anybody who doesn't know you, which I don't know at this point, 
who that could possibly be. I know. Let's introduce yourself to everybody. Sure. Uh, so I'm, uh, my current role is the import and export uh, compliance, c- compliance manager at uh, Orchard Custom Beauty, uh, which is a private labeling um, business to business company that specializes in beauty tools, bath accessories, and cosmetics. Um, we're part of a global uh, division. So we get to work with a lot of um, international friends every day. Um, and yeah, making the world a better place on lipstick at a time. Um, what else about me? Yeah, I told you I'm here in Toronto and uh, we're back to other things that are starting this week, uh, not in supply chain, but I'm back to Girl Guides on Thursday. So yay. Yeah, that's exciting. That's, you actually, yeah. you get, you give a lot of time and energy to Girl Guides and you really love yeah. it and you love being in nature. So that's totally your yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my thing. I did Girl Guides, but I was like, Pathfinders, absolutely not. I am done with camping outside. It's so funny to become an adult and then you start to talk to people and then you're like, oh, you would never go outside because there are living things and green stuff. Okay, cool. You know, it's such a, like you meet all these different personalities, you know, when you're at work, like, oh, I'm going camping this weekend. And it's like, I no. would rather not ever yeah. do that. No, 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 no. Glamping is totally my thing. Yeah. If ever I get out of a hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyways, so actually, you know what? I haven't even pulled up the poll yet. So why don't we do the market update first? Actually, okay. before we do that, I was telling everybody about Superstar Game Face. Yes. Give everybody your take on it because everybody's <laughs> hearing from me and I'm like, I want to hear from everybody else what they thought and why they should go and watch it. Okay. Well, yeah, you heard from the creator and inventor of the game. So, um, so it was so fun because we had, we had different people from different areas uh, so like, you know, we had Atlanta, we had Texas, we had, you know, in the North, we had us in Canada. Um, and we had, and some of the partners knew each other and some of them knew each other through social media, but hadn't met in person. Right. So we had this sort of interesting partnership dynamic between people. Uh, there are people who you've probably seen on LinkedIn. So it was like nice to see them sort of out of the, like the work mode, conference mode, professional mode. Um, and then how to see, the, I don't know, I, people are fascinating. It's like how people tackle the puzzles or the questions and then how they collaborate with each other. And it just resulted in like some people, you know, and like typical to our industry, it's like people do the most, you know, like no one comes in and like sort of half asses it. <laughs> it was like the most. So it was, uh, it was super fun. And like, and it's different and just sort of changes it up. So well, I had a really good time. I laughed a lot. You, you get to see the whole Freight Waves office because of a yeah, there's a- <laughs> And I'm just going to leave it there because you need to go and watch it and see what I'm talking about. Because yeah. Cloverfield that was snaps, the, like through the office. You got to. Yeah. That was the funniest, <laughs> longest two minutes, I think, in supply chain. We talk about this show being the fastest 30 minutes. Yeah. That was the longest, funniest and two funniest. minutes. Because we were yeah. like, and and then, <laughs> and then we put music to it because we were like, do, do, do. Where's from the Freight Waves team? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyways, anyways, I now have the poll up. And actually, I do want to give a shout out to everybody in our community and the audience. We just hit 60,000 followers on our mm-hmm. LinkedIn page and just want to thank all of you for all of your continued support. It does not go missed. And um, we just want to thank you so much for helping us hit that milestone. All right. So let's get to the poll of the week. So the question we asked everybody last week, ask for forgiveness or permission. We had 602 votes. 62% said forgiveness. 25% said permission. And 13% said neither. I asked for and then commented below. What do you think about this one? You know, my initial, I think, I don't know. I think it's a phrase that in English, um, you know, you hear a lot. Maybe it's, maybe it's very North American, but it's like, it's something you hear a lot. You, you hear it a lot. And so you tend to have an answer. Like, you know, it's, it's a very quick, like, you know, what side you're on. And I hadn't really thought about it. Right. <laughs> I'm forgiveness. Like I'm going to do what I want to do. And then, you know, it can't be that bad. I'm a pretty good decision maker and people trust me. Um, but then someone in the comments was like, I don't need to ask for either because I've already like communicated my decision and I have feedback from all of these people. And I was like, damn, that's a good answer. (laughs) And that's actually probably more what I do, you know, like I'm not like, I don't like just go rogue every day and do a bunch of, you know, nonsense. So it's kind of funny, but, but I felt like, you know, you just, you see it and you're like, forgiveness or, you know, permission. 
because we just don't think about it. And this really got me to stop and think about something that is so kind of status quo and mm -hmm. so often hurt. So I, and the answers and like below the comments in the comments, I know I'm oh, reading good. some of them now. So I was like, Oh, sir, that, that is a great answer. <laughs> oh, look at that. You know, so. Like Melissa, I think 70% plus answering forgiveness highlights more about our current society and culture than anything else. <laughs> well, because we all assume that we're making the best decisions because we're knowledgeable. And like, yeah. it's so self -centered. Like when I started to dig in, I'm like, this is so self-centered. Like I feel, um, <laughs> you know, we're so like superior. Like I know best and other people just catch up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like, that's yeah. like, what? <laughs> Well, and Justin says, I choose permission. Sophia says, ask for information and share information. That simple. Joshua says it's a procedure. <laughs> I think we need to add, dive a little bit more into that one and see what yeah. he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, Lily says, explain the current situation and come with ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and then Grace says, forgiveness or permission, depending on the situation. And that's interesting, too, because um, Sam posted something the other day about whether you uh, read a book, like a paper book, or whether it's an ebook. Right. And I went back to her and I was like, it depends what I'm doing. Beach, yeah. <laughs> it needs to be paper because ebook is just not good on the beach, right? The glare, yeah. the sand, all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Ebook for everyday reading. And yeah. then there's audiobooks. I can't and read. There's a car where you can't read when you're driving. There you go. <laughs> so it really depends on the situation. Yeah. And so I really liked that answer as well because I feel like sometimes we get trapped by either or. And I think a lot of times it's really about, well, it depends. It depends where I am. It depends what the situation is. It depends if the answer is needed very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have time to go through potentially red tape and all of that kind of stuff. Right. So, yeah, yeah it was a really great poll. And like you said, it started a lot of really good conversation. I want to thank everybody who participated in that poll. Everybody seems to love it. So we are going to continue that going. So why don't you give everybody a bit of a market update? What are you right. seeing? Uh, what's kind of happening within your world of logistics and shipping globally? Um, would love to kind of hear what's happening. Yeah. Um, so congestion has eased up a lot um, because we really did, it, you know, from from my perspective and from what I was moving, um, we really were moving high volumes um, late in um, sort of third quarter and into fourth quarter. It just sort of stuff got stalled. Mm -hmm. um, so it just took longer. So we've seen that congestion ease up. We've seen you know, the volumes ease up and that's sort of across the board. So I'm, you know, I, I'm into Rotterdam, New York, Los Angeles, um, even Vancouver, it's getting a bit better. There's still a lot of, I think the key issue in Canada is the um, discharge and de-stuffing at the um, sort of point of destination. So in Toronto or in Montreal are where the holdups are. So things are starting to move through. Um, there's been a bit of rail car shortages, of course, during January, December, January, February, we have weather <laughs> here. That, Although it hasn't been too bad. bad. I mean, um, people yeah, can't there, see, we well, don't have enough snow. <laughs> it's like you forget, you're like here, you know, here in Toronto, it has been sort of rainy and gray. It's like almost, you know, sort of Vancouver-like. Um, but I never, I never think to check the weather for like the middle of Saskatchewan oh, no. and that's really where, <laughs> you know, like you're like, there's this true. sort of prairies where you're like, oh, what is happening there? Oh, it is minus 25 <laughs> and there's five feet of snow. Okay. I can see why the train is slowed down. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing I'll mention is Lunar New Year is, um, I know Chinese New Year and Lunar New Year, uh, are February or January 22nd. So that's the actual, you know, sort of Eve and into the, into the new year. Um, and our factories are gone. Already? Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And like, I found, I don't know, we're all finding it that it's a little bit, one, the date is a little bit earlier because like last year it was February 5th. Um, maybe the year before it was maybe in January, but usually it's sort of that first week of February or around there. And then this year it feels earlier and then the leaving feels earlier. And so I think we're still dealing with some of the shutdowns. Um, yeah, the public health measures, because China mm -hmm. was really effective. Like when you have your most of your population going on a holiday um, and you have a public health situation, it's really, you know, practical to extend or yeah. use that holiday as, as sort of a tactic to to kind of combat the, the health issues. So 
it's hard to say whether it's been that it's like, it's hard to say. I know there was talk. We talked about it on thoughts and coffee, some power and, and energy issues mm-hmm. that we might be having. I don't know if it's some, some of that, um, you know, it's just been a, a sort of confluence of events. Um, but they, like most of them are gone. So, wow. you know, you're just frantic, like, Oh, we don't actually have the telex bill. Uh Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be back. Like, make sure everything's in order, people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just feel like we were a little, we were a little, you know, we've been doing it for so long that maybe you get a bit complacent, and then so now we're a little like, oh, I forgot to get this. Oh well, you know, I'll manage. I'll figure it out. Well, and if they change the dates on you, I mean, that's what kind but of messes you, you up. You think you have so much time. Yeah, yeah, and then you realize you're like, oh no, it's this weekend. Like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, I would have taken off on holiday. I guess, anyways. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, so otherwise things are, things right now are nice and nice and easy and we'll see how it goes. Awesome. Well, you're going to be back in two weeks hosting Thoughts and Coffee anyways. So you're going to be able to give another market update. I want to say hi to Audria, John, and Asadula over on my personal LinkedIn. Thanks for joining us. So now it's time to get into the articles that we're going to be talking about this week. So the first article is about retail supply chain in reverse. Now, I don't know if you guys saw DC's live show last Friday. You can find all of our live shows over on the Let's Talk Supply Chain YouTube channel. So if you missed it, you can go and check it out, Action Items. And she was talking about uh, the returns process. Farai also talks about last mile delivery, and they also talk about um, some reverse logistics in their show as well. So definitely go and check that out because it's one of the biggest topics I feel that is coming out or starting to come out for 2023. Um, and it's how do we manage that? Because we don't want obviously the disposal disposal option because that doesn't help our sustainability efforts. What they're saying is online returns are at 20 to 30% because you actually can't try anything on. So to put that into context, Amazon in 2021 had $469 billion in net sales. If you multiply that by 21% return, that's like $98 billion in returns. That's a lot of product. That's a lot of money. And so what are we going to do about it? And in this particular article, they're saying that tech can maybe help like maybe with like virtual change rooms so people can actually see what the product's going to look like. I don't know if it's necessarily going to help with fit, but we'll see. But they also talk about changing the mindset around returns. Instead of thinking about it as a burden, you think about it as a source of supply. Now, obviously, as a source of supply, if you're bringing it back into your inventory, there's a few things that you need to do, right? There's going to be 5% that need to be discarded because they just cannot be reused or Mm -hmm. repurposed. But the rest of it, you are going to have to take a look at, especially if it's clothes. If it's been tried Mm -hmm. on, I mean, you've got to wash it. Like there's, there's multiple things that you have to do with it for it to be able to be considered supply. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a matter of, really taking into account what that 20 to 30% actually means for your business, what your sustainability goals are, and how you can rethink about the returns process. What did you think about this when when uh, you read about it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's good that we keep it at the front of attention because returns can be a very quiet thing that happens yeah. and you don't realize and the general public does not realize the extent of the impact of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and for, and for, you know, it's the, it, like you said, it's the time, it's the cost, mm-hmm. but it's also, you double it. And then you see these businesses that are selling, you know, if we look at clothing, they're selling clothing for a price that is just completely unsustainable yeah. because they're trying to make a sale and they're doing this fast fashion, which doesn't last. Um, so there's not a lot of longevity and then you're sending it out to be tried on and sent back. And then what you're going to steam clean it every time. Like it's not going to hold up. You didn't make it to, <laughs> to do yeah. that. Um, and then, you know, and like, so we, we sort of have this, especially in garments, you keep seeing it. And I, I know we've talked about it before, but you keep seeing it. Like, it's like, they're disposable. Yeah. Like you can wear them like two times and then, and you're like, no, you can't do that. with clothes. <laughs> like that is yeah. not none of these materials were intended for that, you know, no matter how cheaply you make them. And so, you know, the other surprise is that a lot of these businesses aren't including returns and processing returns in the price of the garment, because otherwise there's no way it could be $25. It would have to be a $60 garment because you would have to like the cost account for it, Mm -hmm. right? And you're not accounting for it or you're accounting for it. So in, in a way that you're like, 
Well, disposal is 10 cents a garment. So I'm going to do that instead of the 30 cents a garment it is to divert. You so know, that's interesting. Hire someone to sift through, like yeah, because some of the retailers are charging actually for returns now. I actually just bought yeah. something the other day, and I looked at their return policy because yeah. I can't try it on because it's online. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, "There's a ten dollar processing fee or whatever," but that doesn't include, I think, the postage. Yeah, um, which and is so, not fair. And the it's other part of this article talks about how the suppliers of the retailers, mm -hmm. um, instead of taking back the items that have been returned, they're actually giving them money to dispose of yeah. it. Yeah. So the retailers are feeling the crunch of being in the middle and the suppliers giving them that money, but them not wanting, because that disposal is going to affect their supply, uh, their sustainability efforts. Mm -hmm. And so how do we deal with this? Because the suppliers don't want it back. So yeah. it's a really, really interesting article. Lots of things to think about, lots of things to take into consideration. Um, this is not the last that we're going to hear of this. I think there are many different things that need to be talked about. And it's not the same for every single business, right? Yeah. I think each business needs to figure out what that right solution is for them. But I think we are going to see, you know, that charge for a return. And I just want to say hi to Dee and Aaron um, over on my personal. Thanks for joining us. We haven't seen Aaron in a while. So glad yeah. you could join us today. All right. So the next one, the next article is about avocados for Super Bowl. Does anybody know when Super Bowl is? I don't know the actual date. I think it's the first weekend in February. Well, so this article, and I, I meant to look it up actually before we got on Thoughts and Coffee and I forgot. You can tell we're big football fans here. Oh, <laughs> well, my family is. Because <laughs> um, this says avocados from Mexico are looking to make a touchdown on February 12th. But oh. my question when I was reading that, I was like, is this before the Super Bowl or after the Super Bowl? If somebody could let me know in the comments whether the avocados are actually going to touch down before Super Bowl. Because Super Bowl is actually one of the biggest times of the oh, year okay. for avocados. It's and Sorry? It's February the 12th. It's Super Bowl. So it touch so avocados are going to touch down on the day of the Super Bowl. That's going to be I like think, a mad rush. No, I think I think they mean that that's when they're going to have their moment, but they're oh. going to be in the stores before. Hopefully, okay. Um, Let's hope so. Anyways, so this yeah. article was there. We go. Jamal Thanks, says, Jamal, Jamal. There we go. Amy, February twelfth. Thank you so much, people. So, anyways, maybe I read the article wrong, but in mm -hmm. either case, let's do some stats on avocados leading yeah. up to the Super Bowl. Ninety-five thousand truckloads of avocados are moved into the U.S. from Mexico every single year, with ninety-seven percent crossing in Texas. And uh, the Super Bowl is the biggest occasion for yeah. avocados. And eight in 10 avocados in the United States are from Mexico. Is that surprising? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's surprising. Yeah. Oh, surprising. Amy is a Bills fan. Ah. Look at this. Okay, we need to put this on here. All right. Whoever's got a favorite team, let's put it yeah. in the comments now so that we can all get an idea of who is rooting for <laughs> who. All right. Because I don't mind talking about that and putting that yeah. up there. Um, so what did you think about this? I think it's really funny because the Avocados from Mexico, which is a nonprofit marketing organization, when I read that, I have the I have the um, the ad in my head, Avocados <laughs> from Mexico. I don't know if you guys have that in the US, but we have it here in Canada. And so when I read it, all I could think about was the TV ad that says that. <laughs> um, but now they're partnering with Dion Sanders and Tracy Edmonds, who's his wife, to drive avocado excitement for the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who doesn't eat avocados. I love avocados. So I don't know if I need to drive excitement, but I mean, it's kind of cool. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a fascinating marketing perspective. Like create a holiday for your food product, right? <laughs> we're going to so, like, back on the Super Bowl every no, year. We're yeah. going to avocados from Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl. And maybe by next year, next January, we're going to be talking about how it went from 95,000 truckloads to like 140,000 yeah. truckloads because we're just so avocado obsessed <laughs> from all this marketing that's going to be happening. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's like this build up to this big event, right? That you've got, okay, we've got to get these shipped out. We've got to get them on time. It's like us and, you know, lip gloss sets for holiday or, you know, people have... <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's like, is Super Bowl going to upstage Cinco de Mayo as your as your sort of, you know, sort of avocado holiday? I don't know. Hey, bring on the avocados. Like I yeah. said, I'm a big fan, people. <laughs> big fan. All right. So the third article that we're talking about today, enough about Super Bowl. Oh, wait a second. Oh, okay. Niners. Michelle has weighed in here. <laughs> go Niners. All right. So we've got Bills fans. We've got Niners. My husband's a Giants fan. I think my stepson's Packers. And my, and dad's my brother Texas is Michigan. Chiefs. So just so yeah. it's out there. <laughs> All right. So the last article that we're going to be talking about, fossil fuels embedded in EV supply chain, a big problem. <laughs> now, <laughs> they're, they're saying that electric vehicles long term are better because there's zero emissions. However, yeah. Electricity is powered by fossil fuels and materials to make the car actually make their supply chain um, not great. Like they still yeah. have emissions from like the plastic <laughs> that they use to build the cars and all sorts of other things. And the green, the alternative to fossil fuel is green energy. The problem with the green energy right now is that it has to be stored in batteries and it can't be stored long term. And the production of batteries is bad for the environment. Yes. So <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do, but Tesla just came out and reduced all of their yeah. car prices and said that 10% of vehicles sold globally in 2022 were electric vehicles. So they are going up in popularity, but yeah. they're not necessarily the answer that we all think they are. So what do you think? I think it's a typical, I think it's a typical human way to approach something where we look at one part of it and mm -hmm. we don't look at the whole and the beginning and the middle. So we're like, this will have less emissions. Yeah. Okay. How do you make it emissions, 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 emissions? So it's, it's like, a, it's a, I don't know. It's a strategy thing. It's a problem solving thing. It's like you're, and, and you do have to do these things with, as, as we have more and more questions about products is the end product, you know, a better emissions reduction than the cost of the production. And that's what we have to assess every single product, every single supply chain. So. Well, and let me tell you, we're not just stopping at cars. If anybody no. saw what came out of CES, which actually I meant to mention on Thoughts and Coffee last week, yeah. Sony and Honda announced their mysterious EV prototype, a Aphelia, due in 2026. We don't know what it is, but this is an <laughs> another electric vehicle. We've also got... Uh, Gluck's kind announced Ella, which is a $3,000 self-driving stroller. Nice. This sounds mildly terrifying. That's terrifying. But Ella know. only moves autonomously if a child isn't inside and it also plays lullabies. I don't understand that because what do you need your stroller? Why do you need your stroller to move? So that it can meet you where you are. Like it's but in the. How it's, far is it away from you? I mean, this is well, so this is the thing. We're solving a lot of you're solving a lot of quote unquote inconveniences, and we're not solving problems. <laughs> well, so that's a good point, right? Because we're not we're not solving for the energy and the electricity to power all of these things. No, but we're, we're solving so that I can sit on my ass on the couch and have something brought to me. You're like this was not a big problem before. I'm going to have to mark mark this episode explicit. Audrey Sorry. is <laughs> totally on a swearing rant today. <laughs> so my apologies to anybody out there who's getting offended by her using <laughs> the A I'll send you my email address place. and you can send me your comments. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. I just had to mention it because it's anyways. So go and check that article out. It's really interesting because it talks a lot yeah. about, you know, um, makes you think about the supply chain and the yeah. electricity oh. and where is everything coming from? Yeah. All right. Well, last but not least, I do want to talk about where we are going to be. So I'm going to be at manifest. And I just found out that I'm going to be doing the keynote on the first day with Patrick of DHL. And we're going to be talking about mega trends. So hopefully I'll see you there. I have a very busy schedule at manifest. So <laughs> if you see me come up and say hi, because I cannot put any meetings in my calendar at the moment, but we do have a team there. So our Let's Talk Supply Chain team will be there. So definitely set up meetings with them as well. TPM 23, TPM Tech's going to be Yay. February 23, 20, 
four. And then yeah. TPM is going to be 26 through March 1st. I'm going to be yeah. there for that. So is I'm going to be there. Um, also next week, I, I'm doing a webinar with Flex and we're going to be mm -hmm. posting about that soon. So hopefully we'll see you there. There's lots of people signed up for that. So yeah. come and uh, join us. And then of course, we've got all of our live shows, which you can find past episodes on the Let's Talk Supply Chain YouTube page. Go and check that out. Go and check them out. There are, uh, there's a lot of great information. We are a little bit over, but go and check out Let's Talk Supply Chain YouTube page. Go and check out our website, letstalksupplychain.com. Remember, we interview all of the vendors in supply chain. So if you're looking for a vendor, we have like most likely had them on the show and you can check them out before you get into their sales funnel. Anyways, so great to see everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Audrey, thank you for joining me. And next week, I've got Richard Howells of SAP mm -hmm. on the show. And we're going to be talking about that article, that Forbes article, the Supply Chain yes. Trends. Yes. You're not going to want to miss that. So we'll see you next